My name is Yanis Andreou and today I have the pleasure to be with Mr. Richard Yorsida of Makitos Appraisals for part number two of our interview on the state of the real estate market in Vancouver. Thank you Richard for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. I really appreciate that. You're welcome, Yanis. And um, let me uh, start with the first question of the second part which is uh, because I think we didn't fully cover yeah, it in I the know, previous that's right. part. Yeah, I know, that's um, right, yeah. Is this a good time for first time home buyers to purchase a property if they have a minimum ownership horizon of 10 to 5 to 10 years? Understanding that if they buy now, they may lose 10 15 percent of the purchase price in the next two years, which they will make up over a 10 year horizon. Yeah, but then see, my, my, my answer to that is why do it now then? If you know you're going if the market's on a slide, Okay. Why are you buying now? Okay. Okay. Even if you're thinking of holding it for 20 years, why are you buying it now? You're going to lose. Why not wait to when the market, do you think the market's going to bottom out? Or where you think that it can't go any lower? Then you buy. You don't buy now on a sliding market. They okay. do say that though. You buy when no one else is buying. Right. But right. that's when it's at the bottom. Okay. Okay. Not when it's midstream to the bottom. Okay. okay? And that's where people get mixed up. So they do it midstream. Like now, now I think it's midstream. Yeah, okay. it's like I was saying, there's still so much room for it to go down. Okay. You know? Like my house in Coquitlam. Right. It's worth about 1.4 million right now. And you know what I really think it should be worth? Really? About 400,000. Really? Well, that's because then that would be affordable to people, and you know, back in the day, you're not making that much more money right now, are you? You know, four hundred thousand is still a good chunk of change, yes, right? Yes. You got to put a hundred G's down. That qualifies you for a conventional loan, yes. okay? Yes. And then you're still going to be packing three hundred. That's right. You see what I mean? Yes. Okay, but no, there is one point four. Well, who can even look at that? How do you qualify for that? You need right. you need you need a, a quarter million or three hundred thousand down. You know what I mean? See? That's and right. how long is it going to take you to save three hundred thousand dollars? Yeah. You see what I mean? A long time. It could take you a whole lifetime. A long time. And then you won't ever have a house. That's right. So in your opinion, we may be at the beginning to the middle of the decline. No, the beginning is already there. It started already, Yanis, and now we're we're in, in the stream of it now. Okay. And I think we're not even to, uh, in my opinion right now, I think we're, we're just barely even halfway. Okay. Halfway on the drop. Okay. okay? Because, because my house still in Coquilla right now, I can still get 1.3 or 1.2 and I shouldn't. Okay. Okay? And I'm saying that. I'm saying that should be half a million less. That's how much room there is to go, okay. in my opinion. Okay. Okay. But uh, I'm an older guy, so that's why I think that way. Yes. But uh, still, though, uh, I know people aren't making, you know, an accountant doesn't make any more, and he does not that much more than he did five years ago. You right. know what I mean? I mean, right. uh, you know, so that's what I'm saying. And the government people, too, what they get? Their 2.5% increase over the last, you know, every year, five years. What's that? See? So it just doesn't add up. And that's why I say, first time buyers, no way. Don't buy yet. Don't buy. Wait for that slide. Then, then you don't have to go through the downside knowing and it comes back again. Why do that? See? E even if it means that you will compete with others at that time? No, because no. but even if, see, if you don't buy right now, Yanis, you've got that much more for your down payment. Correct. Okay, and then it's sliding. Correct. And then now you can have that much more equity. Everything is better. You're going to be saving more. You're not going to be paying that interest for that time, right? right? And you're going to accumulate that even more. So now you're going to have a greater down payment and less purchase price that's uh, right. right that's right how good does that get see so why would you why would I ever say to any buyer first time buyer to go buy right now I would never say that especially when and price. realtors shouldn't be choked about that either they should just tell the truth and say that if you want to do fix your existing home or what you're doing now or save till it comes back that's right you know but they still have other ways and people still have to sell and, and do whatever you know what I mean and you know, and you get divorced, and you got to sell, and see stuff like that, forced sale. You right? move to another province. Yeah, no, but divorce even because you know, husband and wife. Right. You sell, and you know, you got to sell it. Right. You got to sell your place. Now you got to go buy another one, or don't. See, so it, it doesn't matter. It will continue to go, but just on buying, no. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, now we know that uh, the sale to the list to sale ratio is low in the lower mainland, and um, 
for example, in Richmond it was 5%, in West Vancouver 6%, in North Vancouver 16%, which means that only 5 out of 100, 6 out of 100, and 16 out of 100 homes are selling. Uh, is this a matter of unrealistic pricing by realtors or pressure by sellers to overprice their homes? Yeah, see, there's many things like we were talking about, yeah, so that, that, that affect that. And uh, it's not just those two items, it's, it's many items that, 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 that affect it, okay? And many un, unseen items, okay, that people don't normally look at. Okay. And um, uh, um, it, it's, well, it's, it's hard to say. It, it's hard to say because right now, if, if anybody were to be buying a place right now, you would have to be selling and buying. That's the only way to do it right now, is to sell and buy. Because, because it doesn't matter what the market's doing if you do those, both, both those things. Because right. you've you got, you, you got, you got to play on both, the, the selling and the buying. Right. Okay? So that, that's why right now, um, no, you, you shouldn't be buying anything. And, uh, uh, and it's not how the, the realtors are pricing it out. It's just sheer demand. Okay? Even if they are low right now, they still aren't going to sell. See, because right. there's no demand, and, and the, the public is scared, Yanis. That's right. That's right. The, the government and the people have made the public scared. And if you're scared, are you going to buy? No. See? No, no. And it doesn't even matter if you're priced really well. Because these realtors say, well, yeah, look, you got the appraisal here even. And there's still nobody's buying it, see? That's right. If there is fear and I can market. and I can do that right now. Yeah, so I can go give them one of my appraisals, and you put it on the market. It may not go. See, that's right. It may not go. People say no. I'm not buying now. Even at that, even that comparison is great, and that's what it should be. No, I'm not buying it because they see declining prices. Yes. they don't feel comfortable. Yes, yes, and they've been told that by our government too. See, that's right. Right. That's so right. so that that builds a a thing in your head that to 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 be be scared. That's right. And you're not going to do it if you're scared. That's right. That's right. Thank you. And I have a follow-up question on this one. Is this a good time for homeowners to sell and buy to upgrade their current single-family home, townhouse, or apartment into a larger property because there is no competition in the market? Well, yes and no. But you're basically, if you're going to do any rentals, you're doing it for yourself right now. And yes, you are going to make it back later. Okay? But basically, you're doing it for yourself right now. It's like a swimming pool. Okay, when you buy a swimming, okay, yeah, see, I have a house right now. If I dropped a swimming pool in there and it cost me fifty thousand dollars, and say I praise my house at a million dollars, do you think it's going to be a million fifty now because I dropped that fifty thousand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That pool, you might get fifty for it, you might get twenty five for it, you may get nothing for it, you may even minus for it. Yes. Okay. If you're in an area where there's no swimming pools and you're the only house that's got a swimming pool in it. What do you think that's going to do when you sell it? It will have no effect. For one thing, a swimming pool is cost and security. You have to build a fence around it that nobody can get into, the kids. If they walk in there, it's your fault. Right. Okay? So you got to do that for security. you got to build a fence around it. Not only that, it's going to cost you for electricity because you've got to heat that pool. And then it's going to cost you to maintain that pool for the pH. Okay? okay. That's all a cost. Okay. People don't want these costs. That's so right. I've seen swimming pools that are $100,000 that are brand new being buried. That's right. And buried in such a way, Yanis, that the next buyer, if they come and want that pool, they can dig it back up and it'll function again. Okay. okay. Okay? But they don't want that expense. And they don't have any kids and they didn't want the pool. That's right. That's but they like the, the, the location of the property and they love the house. Yes. <laughs> but uh, see, but a pool can add or detract that way, and you don't know what it's going to do to to you. And it's the same thing as when you're doing the rentals. You see, yes. that's why too with a pool, if you're going to drop one in there, give me to appraise it. I'll appraise it now. I'll appraise it with the pool. And you want to know something? Sometimes it can even go negative. Okay, okay. But isn't it safe to say that somebody that owns a house that is worth 1.2 million in Coquitlam? that would like to sell an upgrade because there is very little competition. Mm -hmm. They can probably find some opportunities to buy something larger for something that is they wouldn't be able to afford two years ago, three years ago, mm -hmm. because of the fact that their money can go further mm -hmm. by if they can afford to sell their property and buy up. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. safe to say? Well that's safe to say. Yeah, that's safe to say. So there is an opportunity then for someone that has an apartment or a townhouse to appreciate it to take that equity 
an upgrade from an apartment to a townhouse, yeah. or from a townhouse perhaps to a house, yeah. let's say from Surrey to Mission, yeah. or from... No, but you see, uh, so that's why it's good though, is because, see, you got your, your, you got your apartment, and now you're going to move to a townhouse. Or you got your townhouse, and now you're going to move to a half duplex. Right. Or you got your half duplex, now you're going to move to single family detached. Yes, you're still going to be paying a little more, but it's not going to be that much more. Right. So yes, that would give you an incentive to do that. And and why to do that now is because the because you got so much equity in there right now, you can't borrow that money. Yes. You see what I mean? So, so so that would be an incentive to them to do it. So this is a great opportunity for realtors to educate the public that yes, prices are declining, but it's a great opportunity if you have built-in equity in your house. Yeah to move up from apartment to townhouse, yeah. townhouse yeah. to house, yeah. Yeah. because you, you yeah, can yeah. make some low-ball offers yeah. on properties that are not getting a lot of demand. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're selling and buying, yes. that's the major thing there, yes. 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 okay? Yes. And once again, that, that, that goes with this, this question. This is, this is clear. Yeah. Your yeah. advice is yeah. to basically sell your current property and buy a... Yeah, and that, that would be good to do that right now, see? And then yes. you're not going to lo lose any money that way. You're probably going to earn... Or very little. You're probably yeah, you probably will earn. You're, yeah, because you like you say, you can lowball that next one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Especially because after you've got a firm firm sale on yours. Yes. Yeah. yes. No, thank you for that advice. Yeah. I think it's gold yeah. for for yeah. our viewers. Yeah. Um, what advice can we give to a professional realtor that would like to help a seller complete the sale of her home within fourteen to twenty one days at a reasonable and realistic price um, that reflects current market conditions? Instead of having it hold onto the market for 90, 120 yeah. days because it's being overpriced. Yeah, it gets stagnant that way too. Right. You know, and people look at that right away and say, how oh, long? Well, then I'm not going to look at it. Look at how long it's been on. It's too high priced. Right. So that there t implies that it's too high priced if it's been on for like 90 days or more. Now, I would think that that would, that would be a really good indication to show that. Would it be safe to say that it's in the best interest of a realtor to have the client pay for an appraisal order, let's say by your firm, to make sure that you know what the price is, yeah. and then maybe increase it by five, ten thousand reasonably yeah. Yeah. to attract true interest? Well, yeah, yeah, that's what that, that would be good. That would be good to do that because then you got an appraisal there that they can also use for financing. Okay, so they can okay. take that appraisal. They can take that appraisal and, and even make a deal with whoever the, the prospective uh, buyer is and say, well, if you buy it for this and you've got an appraisal, you can go get your financing right here with this. You won't have to uh, pay for another appraisal. So hypothetically, if they pay $375 for the appraisal mm -hmm. and then they, the new purchaser says, I would like to get financing, they can probably get a letter of transmittal for $175, 50% yeah. of the appraised value. Not even. Free. If it's within the, within a few uh, the first month, we give the uh, letter of transmittal for free. Oh, okay. So yeah. that's a bonus. Yeah, that's to the a... owner, to who ordered the appraisal. To, to so the it's owner. up to him, and, and it's his decision anyways, because he has to okay it to, for that appraisal to go anywhere, okay. right? Because he owns it. Okay, so okay. within the first 30 days, yes. the letter of transmittal yeah. is free to yes. the new buyer. Yeah, to anybody. Anybody. If you phone me later and you want a letter of transmittal to a different lender right now, Yes, you know I'll give it to you. I won't okay. charge you for it. Okay, no, yeah. no, that's great. But if you come back six months from now and you tell me that, then I might charge you because now I gotta go dig it up and look at it and it's archived and you know what I mean, whatever, yes. or not even archived, but still it's an older report yes. and it still work for us, for my secretaries to go do that yes. and for us to do that too. And also look at current fair yeah. market to see if the virus yeah. are there. Yeah, see, that too. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, some people believe that it's better to wait until market prices level off before they buy. Is this a sound strategy knowing that nobody can predict the bottom of the market and also that when the tide turns, prices should go up quickly? Aren't they taking a chance, as we can expect at that time, another round of bidding wars on available properties? That's going to be a long ways away okay. before there's bidding wars, yeah, in okay. my opinion. Okay. Yeah, a long ways away. That, that has to be a really strong demand when there's bidding wars. And see, to me right now, the way the whole economy is going and what's going on, it's going to be a long time for that to happen again, in my okay. opinion. Okay. So we should expect uh, in the next two, three years, nothing like that? That's right. Nothing like that. Okay. That's what I, I say. That's my own opinion. Okay. In the next two or three years, you're not going to find any of that. I'd be very surprised if you so the, the only unforeseen factor is the spring and summer market that may change yeah, the, yeah. the conditions. And that's going to that's gonna dictate what the rest of the year is going to do. 
Okay. That's going to be a uh, that, that's going to dictate the whole market. Okay. What's going to happen in the spring here? Okay. If there's big demand in the spring. It's going to it's going to stabilize and maybe go up. If it's nothing, well now we're in for trouble. It's going to go right down. Okay. So it's going to be an interesting yeah. five to six months to yeah, see it is. how things are going. It is. Yeah. And see, as an appraiser, we can never dictate that anyways because we have to put a time adjustment on our sales because all our sales have to be behind what effective date that we're doing the appraisal for. That's right. Okay, so yet the, the board won't give you those details right away because they don't know. They have to compile all their information and so you're delayed that one month. There's usually a one month delay on there, yes, okay? Okay. Right? And, and, and that we don't have. So a lot of times... We just assume that it's going that way, so now a sale and we're within that one month, we're still going to knock off that 1% because it's still, in our opinion, down right now. That's right. See? But that's the judgment of the appraiser only, right. not from the real estate board, from the, from the stats from the real estate board. Okay? You have to protect the lender and also the... Yeah. Well, you got to watch that when you do that. See? That's, yes. then that's your own, own opinion then and, and whatever and you're, from your own experience. That's right. That's okay? Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, can Makito's appraisals help homeowners improve the value of their homes by making suggestions on the best areas to renovate, like kitchens, bathrooms, within an appraisal report, uh, such as a cost-benefit analysis? Yes, well, how that came is when I, when what we talked about earlier, okay? You order an appraisal from me, now, as is, and now you're going to renovate or whatever you're going to do. You're going to do the bathroom, you're going to do the kitchen, you're going to do whatever, you're going to do a new roof, whatever. You tell me what you're going to do, okay, and, I, and, and the cost, and I'm going to tell you what you're going to get back market-wise right now okay. to make your decision up whether or not you renovate or you don't renovate. And then it's just your own, own doing because you want it for yourself. Exactly. Your wife wants a new kitchen, so regardless, I'm doing it. See, regardless right. if it goes up or doesn't go up, That's right? Right. That's right? But I can tell you how much it will go up. If you give me all of that stuff right now, I'll tell you right now. And then you can make your own judgment call as to whether or not you're going to renovate or not. If there is a contractor's detailed estimate, yes. you can see yes. this is the yep. current assist value yep. and the completed value. That's right. That's right. Just like new construction. Before the house is even built, Yanis, we tell the bank what it's going to be worth on the market as if it was completely finished right now, 100%. Okay. Right? And then there isn't even a shovel in the ground. Okay. No, no, that's... And then they're going to get their financing on the whole package now of what right. we're telling them it's going to be. That's right. See? Yes, yes. So... so um, that's why you do that on rentals and whatever. Everybody, you should do that all the time. People are... are you should do it all every time. Because you're going to say, if you don't know, you know, That's if it's right. going to enhance your home or how much more, how much more is it going to enhance your home, you don't know as a layman. Right, right. So, so really, I mean, what I'm taking from the interview is that prices may be declining, but the good news is that professional realtors have an opportunity to help homeowners that are trying to upgrade by selling and buying up yeah. to actually... Um, yeah. Properly yeah. priced their yeah. homes. Rather than first time one buyers. See? Okay? Th that's yeah. right. See? Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's where realtors should be going after now. They, they know that anyways because they're not getting any buyers once first time now. Right? They're not. That's it's right. down so low it's not even funny. So That's yeah. right. Ho homeowners that are trying to basically capitalize on the equity they yeah. have and buy up, it's a great opportunity for realtors yeah. as long as they can present it in a way that let's price it correctly yeah. so that it doesn't stay on the market for more than three to four weeks yeah. but we need to get the right price